Okay, hey there, everybody on. Hello, everybody on YouTube and Instagram. Um, today's video I've been asked about for so long. Um, and so here's the thing. I have this recipe for a cassava flour pita bread that actually puffs up on my YouTube and on my blog. But every now and then I have someone that try it and it doesn't puff up. So I wanted to kind of do a live video instead of an edited video so that I can actually show you the process and let you know like what really happens that doesn't allow the bread to puff or what can happen to help the bread, bread puff up. So um, I made a batch earlier because we're not gonna wait for the new batch to be made, but I'll show you the full process from scratch. I'll show you how I puff it up so that you have a better idea. I'll just try to fix that Instagram video because I think my head is cut off a bit. Okay, I think that's better. And it's going to be tricky to show you all what's happening here, but I will do my best. So to start with, the exact recipe is on my blog um, and my YouTube. There is a bit of variation in the blog one. Um, in the one on YouTube, I do use a bit of flaxseed, and I've noticed that um, flaxseed actually doesn't help it puff up well. Um, so I stopped using the flaxseed. Um, so in this recipe, I'm going to skip the flaxseed part. So basically, what I have here so far is some yeast, a little bit of honey, and warm water. Uh, basically, it's a cup of warm water, okay? And then on top of that, I add two cups of cassava flour, one tablespoon of xanathan gum. And I left this yeast to froth um, in a warm place. I used warm water to make sure that the yeast actually frothes up. Um, so this is already ready. Once I put two cups of cassava flour, one tablespoon of xanathan gum, I put a pinch of salt and a tablespoon of olive oil. Let me try to change the light here a bit for the Instagram video. Yeah, it's not doing well with the window behind me. I think this is better. Um, so I'll put a pinch of salt and I'll put a tablespoon of olive oil. I'll mix it in the blender until it's mixed really well, and then I'll leave it for 10 to 15 minutes covered, okay? This is how it's supposed to look like. So if you see, it's like I can shape it in my hand. It's not sticking to my hand, and I can form it, okay? If it's too sticky, add a little bit of cassava flour. If it's too dry, um, add a little bit more water. But basically, I used the exact recipe on my blog and it worked. So those are two cups of cassava flour, one tablespoon of xanathan gum, one tablespoon of yeast, a little bit of honey or sugar just to, you know, have the yeast froth, um, one and three quarters cup of water, one tablespoon of olive oil, and a pinch of salt. And again, all you do is you let the yeast froth and then you add all the ingredients, you mix it in the blender and you're ready. I just don't want to do it now because we're going to have to leave it 15 minutes covered. So I didn't want to waste the time. Now, here is where sometimes it goes wrong. First, I have two pans so that we can test which one will work better. I have a nonstick pan and I have a cast iron pan. And I'm going to change the view of the videos in a bit to make sure we are seeing what I'm doing. The other part that really either makes it or breaks it is the thickness of the dough before you put it and the temperature of the pans. If the pans get too hot, the bread gets icky. If they're not hot enough, the bread is also not happy. And so you need to find that perfect temperature. And I don't know honestly how to find it because I'm not precise enough to like, you know, calculate how much time exactly I leave it to heat. But basically I'm doing it on medium heat. I'm not doing it on the highest and I'll leave it until it's warm enough. Now, the second part here is to show you the thickness of the bread. So let me try to um, fix the camera so that you're actually seeing what I'm doing here. Okay, so this is good for YouTube. Um, let me see what I can do here. Yeah, I think this way you can all see. So what I use is this tortilla, what I use is this tortilla presser, but you can also just use a roller. Um, the whole thing is, I've tested this before, this live video today, 
And the thing is, when it goes too thin, it doesn't puff. And when it goes too thick, it doesn't puff. You need the perfect thickness. So basically, that's kind of the size of the bowl that I'll be putting in. I shape it as a bowl. Let me bring this so you can see better. Shape it as a bowl. I put it here. I put another parchment paper. And I press, but I don't press all the way in until it's super thin. I do leave a little bit of thickness. And that helps it puff up. Okay, so you can see here. I did leave like, you know, just a little bit of thickness. And then we're gonna test our pans. Usually what happens to me is the first one I put doesn't puff and then the second one puffs up better because the pan had warmed up better. But anyway, let me first fix the view one more time. So, and I know this video is not done so professionally, but what I was trying to do really is show you the actual process versus like a professionally made edited video. So here, I think now you can both see. So now the heat has been on medium for a good amount of time as we spoke. So now I'm lowering it down a little below medium. I'm gonna start with this pan. So I'm gonna put this one here and then I have to be patient. I have to leave it until it starts, you know, bubbling up. So in the meantime, I'll make another one and I will put it on the other pan just so that we, I think from what I remember, because I haven't made this bread in a really long time, but I do remember that the cast iron didn't do so well with the puffing, but I just wanted to retest it and see. So here we have another one. I'll put it here. Those, by the way, are the ones I made as a test in the morning. As you can see, they don't always puff perfectly. It really depends on which areas the thickness was correct. So this one like puffed from here, but didn't puff from here. This one actually puffed all the way up, but now since it's cold, it went down because you know this is not gonna be like regular wheat. It's gonna be a bit sticky from the inside. And so if you don't open it up right away when it puffs up, it will actually go down and it will stick. So it's still not gonna be <laughs> a perfect piece of bread, but you can get those pockets. Anyway, um, this one, by the way, is thicker than this one. And this is not something that I really meant to do. It just happened, but it's good so that we can test different things and we can see what's gonna work. Right now, they're starting to bubble up a bit. So if you can see here, there's one bubble. Uh, one way I know that the heat is too much is if when I flip it, um, the dark dots are really dark or burnt. That's when I know I have to put my heat down. So now I'm going to flip the first one. I think the color is good. I maybe can put my temperature a bit down to prevent any burning. And then I'll also flip this one. And then I have to be patient again and allow it some time to puff. And as a disclaimer, this might not puff because not all of them puff the same way. And sometimes I kind of have to do a couple of breads before they come perfect because it's just about learning where's the perfect thickness of the dough and also the perfect temperature of the pan. And I know some people are sophisticated enough to you know, time it and know exactly when to put the bread and what thickness to do it, but I'm not. So I kind of just eyeball it and I see how it goes. This one is actually starting to puff up a bit, but it's not, it's not puffing up, you know, like a pocket. So I'll wait on it a bit. And if it doesn't work, we'll test another one and we'll keep adjusting. This one is actually starting to bubble up. I don't know if you see it. I think you can see it. There's a bubble coming up here. So I'll be patient on that one. And we'll hope that the bubble takes over and it all bubbles up. This one is not doing so great. I'll flip it on the other side and I'll see, but I actually don't think this one will puff up. I might have I might have thickened it too much. Let's see, we'll test another one. I'll make the second one as the thickness of, of this one, so I'll press it a bit more. This one was pretty thick. Um, but this one, as you can see, you have a big bubble here and it's getting bigger. Now, again, if I flatten it perfectly and it's all the that, you know, exact thickness, it will all bubble up. But sometimes I don't do it perfectly, so it really depends. 
Now, because it started to bubble, but it didn't bubble all the way up, I flipped it. And if you can see, now it's actually bubbling all the way up. So it's really kind of just a try and error. I want to get um, I want to get a scissor because we are going to have we need to open this bread right away or else it's going to collapse and close. Okay. I don't see scissors here, but I'll flip it one more time and hope that this last area that didn't puff maybe will puff. This one this one will not puff. I think I think I overdid the thickness with this with this one. So we'll test another one in a moment. I think the other one had better luck. So I'll get this one up for you to see. As you can see, it's all oh, here. It's all puffed up here. There is a section here that didn't puff up. But again, if you want to perfect this, you just keep trying until you figure out what's the perfect thickness. And you try to do that thickness like all along. Now, what I'm trying to do is open it up. No, I won't be able to do that without a scissor. It was super hot. But if you have a scissor, what you do is you open it right away. Once, once it puffs up and you remove it from the pan, you open it. Otherwise, it's going to stick. So I'm going to make another bowl. As you can see, I shape it like this. I'll put it, this time I'll make it a bit thinner for this pan. So I'm going to try to get that same thickness I kind of did here. So I don't press all the way in, but I do press a bit. So it's not like super thin where there is no thickness. It does have a bit of thickness, but not too much. Let's do another one and put it in the other pan. So, so far the cast iron pan is actually winning, but it could also be just the thickness of the bread. Let's give it another try. Again, it's not a foolproof thing. Some breads will puff better than others and you're not, you just need to keep testing it. And if any of you really discover like, you know, the perfect formula, like, like what exactly thickness it needs to be or how much time I need to warm the pan for it to be perfect, please let me know. I did my best with this one and I feel like when I do it more, I get better, but I haven't been doing this for a year. I just like don't have that many bread cravings and I'm lazy. So I will not flip them until I get the first bubbles. I have to see a few bubbles first. And then I flip. It doesn't like bubble up all the way like a pancake, but you'll see a few bubbles and then you'll know this is a good time to flip. One thing we can test together is also to close the lid on one of them and see if that would eat, would help a bit more with the puffing. So I'll flip that one. And I'll flip that one as well. And then we'll wait and see if those will puff up. I look so bad if those don't puff up. I'm here live, guys. Please. I also want to test one that is super thin. Like if I press all the way in, and I want to see what's going to happen with that. You know, one thing, if you want the whole bread to be the same thickness to ensure it all puffs up the same, is once you press it in the tortilla press, rotate it. Because the press kind of, it goes more in one side than the other. So if you rotate the bread press, like, you know, I don't know if you see it here, but like you press and then you rotate and then you take another press and then you rotate and you take another press, then you'll get it even. So this one is actually puffing up. Um, I don't know if you see it, but it is puffing up. Again, it's not a perfect puff, but it is puffing up. I made the next one super thin to test out and see if that will help it puff up a bit better. Okay, now this time the cast iron one actually didn't puff up, which probably means that it's not just about the pan. It's really more about the thickness of the bread. Because if it was just the pan, we would have gotten the same results each time. Anyway, this one, I pressed it super thin, I'll show you. So it's almost like a tortilla. Let's see how that one will do, okay? Let's see if it will puff better or worse. 
this one the cast iron just doesn't want to puff. But again, that's usually the case. They don't always all puff up and they don't always puff all the way up. Uh, but I do think that it's about perfecting the heat and the thickness, nothing more. So you can definitely keep trying. Okay. Let me make, I'll make a thin one for the cast iron as well so that we're testing the same things on both pens. And I'm sorry that I'm not really seeing the questions right now um, because I'm cooking. And also, this is the first time that I ever used Instagram Live in landscape. I hope that the picture is not flipped. Let me know if I'm flipped. Okay, so I made this one super thin and I'm gonna put it here. This one is actually bubbling up, so I'll flip it to the other side. Okay, looks like we have some good hope here. It is starting to bubble. I do want to test. I know this is going to ruin our testing, but I do want to see what's going to happen if I close. Because that will kind of form an oven. You know, it's going to kind of keep the heat. I want to see if that's going to help. So it actually is puffing up under the cover, which means that, oh yeah, it's puffing up really, really well. So I'm going to test that on the other one as well. Let me get another lid. Um, I'll show you this one in a minute, but I will flip this one first and then I'll cover it up and let's see what's going to happen. I'm just worried if I cover it too much that it would cause like vapor, but you can see that one is puffing really nicely. I'll actually flip it on the other side. Some that Sometimes that helps if there's a part that is not puffing up. So that was actually the really, really thin dough. And it really puffed up well. That was the one where I pressed like all the way in and it puffed up pretty nice. We got just one more dough to test out. So let me, if you can see, and then if you cut it open right now before it collapses, you'll get the pocket. If you leave it, it's gonna collapse and it's gonna stick. But if you open it right away, it's actually gonna open up and you're gonna get that effect that you're looking for. Okay, so let's see how things are going. I think I need to increase the heat a bit on this one because the bread is really not getting any color, which means it's not hot enough. Okay, so I only have this last piece. So I'm gonna I'm gonna test it out on this one. I think I think the nonstick has been doing better, to be honest. So now I'm flipping the bread and I'm pressing it in multiple directions to try and get it all to be a similar thickness so that when we put it, we don't get like a half puffed bread. This one is actually starting to puff up, which I think means that covering them up does help a little bit. I'll flip it on the other side and I'll cover it a bit more. There is just like some water dripping, which is could be a problem. I don't want like vapor in the bread. I want it to be more like an oven style. Now, of course, if you have like one of those bread ovens or bread machines that are made specially for bread, I think this process would be easier. So I'll flip this one. I'll wait until it starts puffing a bit and then I'll close like last time. I'm not gonna close now because I'm worried about that ruining the effect. This actually puffed up after we covered it. So. Here you get it. This is a trick that we discovered together right here. I'll show you how this one looks in a minute, but it's really puffing up, so I want to give it a minute. Let me test it here too. I'll close this one. So if you can see, this is all puffed up. It was even more puffed up in the pan. Let me cover it a bit more. 
Again, if you want it to stay like a pocket style, make sure you cut it when it's still hot. Don't wait until you get it out because it's gonna collapse and it's gonna stick because the cassava flower is sticky. It's not like the wheat flower. This one is puffing as well. So here you got it. So after you get that first bubble, cover them up and that really helps. Look, this one looks beautiful. Like this one you can make into a sandwich and it would work if you cut it right now. I just can't find scissors to cut it. This one is beautifully puffing up as well. So I'll wait for a minute and then I'll open it up for you. I'll actually flip it on the other side and then close. Yeah, so here we got another puffed one. Again, not perfect, but it does the trick for me at least. Oh, they're super hot, but again, cut them with a scissor with a scissor here and they will work. Now, let me show you my head again and see if anybody has any questions for me. I hope that this was helpful for everybody that had trouble with this recipe. Um, and I think the reason why a lot of you are not able to get it to puff up is that it's not perfect. And I know it's not perfect. It's not like wheat flour. It doesn't puff up as easily. There is a bit of a trial and error to it. Um, and I think the more you do it, like there was a time where I was doing it every week and that's when I actually took that video where they puffed up because I think I kind of knew the exact thickness. I knew the exact temperature. I, you know, I kind of got the hang of it and I was so good and I would make them puff up completely. We would make sandwiches like even today, cause I haven't done them in a year. I feel like you know, even the ones that puffed up, they puffed up like halfway through, not full way. We did have two that puffed up all the way through. But again, I think it's more of a practice thing. Oh, I wish I had a better answer. But as we said, the tricks are the thickness, the temperature of the pan. Um, covering it does help. I don't know if it would help if we cover from the beginning or not. That's one thing that I wanted to test, but I'm out of dough. Uh, but you can try it at home, like cover it from the beginning and see. But the way I covered it was I covered it after it bubbled. I flipped it on the other side. It started to bubble. Then I closed and it really helped it bubble up because it really kept the temperature inside. Um, I do have this machine, but mine broke down. But that machine helped my bread come out so much nicer. It was actually a bread maker. So basically it was like a pan with a lid and that lid had heat from the above. So it acted like an oven. So basically you would, you would heat it in the, you would put it in the plug and it would heat from the bottom, like where the pan is and from the top and it has like the dome. So it acts like, you know, like an Arabic pita bread oven. I would put the bread and I would close and it would puff up so beautifully. So that's one thing you can invest in if you feel like you're gonna do this a lot and you don't wanna go through all of this hassle. Hope this was helpful for everybody. I hope I would have flipped upside down. I'm gonna figure out now once I post the video. But yeah, hope this was helpful. Assalamualaikum. Just closing the YouTube one.